Hey guys, welcome back. So today what we're going to do is we're going to make a bunny. And I had an idea. If you're like me and you invested in the Let's Resin Flex Rubber uh, squishy making kit, you know, or if you haven't gotten it, you've seen on videos of people who have, that they send you about 42 pounds of different colored flock um, for you to use on your squishies. Well, I don't need 42 pounds of flock. So what do you do with it? What do you do with it? So we're going to make a pink fuzzy bunny. And I'm going to put the flock in the resin. So I have about an ounce and a half of my Fooey Tim One to One that has been mixed up. And I'm just going to... Now, this is an experiment, P.S. And by the way, I have not done this before. I have not practiced. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. So I'm just going to add some some flock in there and stir it up and see what happens. Now the bunny is actually a matte mold so it won't be shiny and it looks like the flock is just kind of, see flock is nothing but felt. It's just little tiny um, ground up felt. Look at that. Interesting. So it looks like it's just mixing beautifully in with the resin. I think I'm going to add a little bit more. I want a little, I want a pinker bunny. Let's make a super pink. Super pink. And, you know what? add some purple. Let's just make a festive bunny. Let's just make different colored bunny bits. But you know, I mean, if this if this works, then, you know, you can use your extra flock to make cool cool resin stuff. Mm, the purple really took over. Okay. Pinky purpley fuzzy bunny. Nice. I don't want to put too much in there because I don't want it to like, you know, if it goes with the whole theory of the, you can add as many dry ingredients as you want to resin and it's not going to muck up the curing, but you can only put so much liquid. Well, these are dry. I mean, do they count as dry ingredients? Does, does it, does it? So we're going to find out. So I am going to spray the bunny because he does have ears that, you know, go down there. And uh, I don't want to get any bubbles. I just I want a bubble free bunny. Get our high tech mess mitigation device. Tap out the extra alcohol if any. And then we're just going to pour a bunny. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. I'm just going to pour slow and let the resin find its way into the little bunny ears. It does thicken up the resin significantly. It does give it a, a lot thicker of a consistency. Kind of like the Elmer's glue thing, but not totally. This is a different kind of thick. This is like a fuzzy thick. This is, you know, like, I wish, I wish I could show it. You 
see the little tiny flecks of, of felt in there? Yeah, just like it thickens it up, which is kind of like me. Weird, yet oddly appealing. All right, so we'll give this a shot and see what the flock we're doing. See you soon. Bunny's done. Let's get him out and see how the flock turned out in him. Oh, look. Hello. Well, that turned out really kind of cool. And since it's a matte mold, I mean, there are a couple of bubbles, but I wasn't anticipating that because of, you know, the, the thickness of the resin and stuff, but it worked. So you can use flock to color your resin <laughs> if you want to and get a really matte effect or uh, just a very solid color without having to use a ton of mica powder. Neat. So yeah. Let me know what you guys think. I think it actually turned out kind of cool. I do. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments about using a uh, spare flock as a resin colorant. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. I really do appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you in my next experiment coming soon. Take care guys. Cheers. <laughs>